What is up my beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kira, AKA Queera. And this is my video series, hashtag ask Queera, where you ask me your questions and I give you, or I try to give my best advice on that question. You usually send me these questions on Instagram and that was the case for this video. So if you wanna participate in the next video, make sure you go follow me on Instagram right here. Do it now. Today's video is all about gender fluidity. Wee! I myself identify as gender fluid. My pronouns are they, them, and she, her. Today it's a they, them day, so please do not refer to me as she, her. I've been debating just using they, them, and no she, her, but I'm kind of scared because of what my family will think and stuff like that. So I'm just, I'm going through wit right now, okay? I do not know everything about non-binariness. I don't know everything about gender fluidity. I am honestly still figuring shit out myself. All of these little bits of advice that I'm giving you is literally just from my own personal experience. Every non-binary person and every gender fluid person is so, so different. This is just from my personal experience, okay? Okay. I made a video how I knew I was gender fluid as well that a lot of these questions can be answered by stuff in that video. So I'm gonna link that video below as well so you can watch it. Honestly, I feel like I need to make an updated one because a lot of things have changed since then and I think I'm just like learning more about myself every day. If you don't have anything nice to say, please do not say it at all. I do not tolerate any sort of hate. Okay, but if you are here and you have an open mind, welcome. Literally, there are so many questions I don't even know where to start. First question, and I feel like this will be a good preface to the rest of the video if you're just unsure about gender fluidity and what it is. So someone said, I don't know if I'm non-binary or gender fluid, help. Non-binary is actually kind of the umbrella term that gender fluid falls under. Non-binary basically just means someone who feels they are not and they do not represent the binaries male or female. They're somewhere outside of that, whether that's in between that or not on the spectrum at all, whether they fluctuate. Non-binary is a huge, 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 huge umbrella term that encompasses a lot of other terms. This has nothing to do with their biological sex, their anatomy, their body parts. This is separate from it. A non-binary person could be born with the male anatomy and a non-binary person could be born with female anatomy. A non-binary person can also be born as intersex. So gender fluid is is a more specific term which basically means that your gender varies based on the day, the month, the year, the hour. So you feel like you kind of fluctuate all around the gender spectrum and maybe even off it. Hopefully that helps clear up that question. Next question, can someone be gender fluid but have mostly feminine days? Gender fluid doesn't mean that you are feminine, masculine, androgynous. It's not really about that. It's more about like how you feel on the inside and not so much how you present yourself. So I wanna make that clear, but oftentimes those things do coincide. So your gender identity and your gender expression. Long story short, you can dress however the fuck you want. You don't have to be androgynous to be gender fluid or non-binary. You don't have to present masculine. You don't have to present feminine. It's about presenting how you feel most comfortable. And yeah, so to answer that question, yes. This one is kind of similar to the last one. What is the difference between being gender fluid and being androgynous? So androgynous is a way of presenting yourself. Androgynous is a way of self-expression. And again, it doesn't necessarily coincide with your gender identity. It can, but it doesn't always. Depends on the person. So they're completely different. You do not have to perform androgyny if you are gender fluid, if that is not what's most authentic to you. But if it is, then who's gonna stop you? I'm not, I'm just gonna sit here and be like, go queen. <laughs> Next question, can you be gender fluid but still be totally fine with your body as it is? I'm assuming that this means that you're gender fluid but you don't experience any dysphoria about your body. The answer is yes, you absolutely can. You don't have to have dysphoria to be non-binary. Some non-binary people don't experience dysphoria, but some do. And um, the ones who don't are lucky mofos. <laughs> I 
while I myself only experience like dysphoria on certain days, dysphoria about certain parts of my body, but not constant. Um, next question is, do you wear a binder sometimes? And do you know any brands that sell good ones? So I'm actually wearing one right now. I personally don't wear binders very often. I can't wear binders for long periods of time, only for like at maximum an hour. Like making this video is probably like the longest I will be able to wear a binder. That's mainly because it makes me feel a bit um, like I can't breathe. I also have an issue with my stomach where like my stomach produces a lot of extra like trapped gas if I wear tight articles of clothing. So I'm scared to wear my binder for too long because then I might get like a stabbing pain in my stomach for the rest of the day. Cause my stomach is silly and it does stuff. Because of that, I usually just wear very tight sports bras. And then sometimes I just don't wear any bra depending on how I feel about my boobies that day. This binder is kind of like a tank top. It's my underwear. This is how it goes. Some binders are like cut off right here. This one is the brand Underworks. We got it from this queer sex store in Toronto. It's called Come As You Are, it's awesome. But you can also order binders online. I will put other websites where you can get binders up on the screen right now. Next question, how to present more androgynous with long hair? Seems shallow, but sometimes I just wanna look more masked. It's not shallow at all. I totally understand this. Personally, like I've always wanted to get my hair cut short but I keep my hair a bit longer because of the work I do, so acting. I find that I get a better range of roles with a bit longer hair. I'm more versatile, I guess. When I wanna be a bit more androgynous and I have longer hair, uh, what I will do is kind of just make it a bit messy, just kind of not styling my hair. Looks a bit androgynous to me personally, so if it's a bit wavier, a bit curlier, to me, straighter hair doesn't look as androgynous. Also, I will touch it up into a beanie. There's also wigs. Like you can literally just buy a short wig that you can put on when you feel like you wanna have short hair um, if you don't wanna make the commitment. But you can also cut your hair short and then buy wigs that are longer for when you wanna have longer hair. Wigs are amazing. I need to do that, honestly. I should do that. <laughs> Someone said, wanting to shave my head for gender euphoria but really afraid. Should I do it? Yes. Yes. Yes! And I wanna see pictures! Next question. I feel comfortable as a woman, but sometimes I experience strong gender envy and I wish I was born male. I don't mind it enough to transition, but I genuinely wish I was born a man. I've questioned my gender a bit the last while and I wanted to know if that's just like a normal thing for cis women. Am I not binary? I'm so confused. So everyone's situation is different. From my experience, I experience a lot of gender envy. Like on certain days, I wish that I looked like a cis man and I wish that I was born a male. I'm really like envious of their bodies and their physique and their muscles and like the way that they're able to wear certain clothes and how it looks on them and how it doesn't look the same on me if I were to put those same clothes on me. And I am not binary. So I feel like that's probably not a super common thing for cisgender women to feel. I think you might be on the gender spectrum a little bit. That's what it sounds like to me. What do you guys think? That's just my uh, non-expert opinion. <laughs> but also, don't feel pressured to, you know, label yourself. You also don't have to figure everything out right now. Like you literally have the rest of your life to do that. And you can just be floating in, floating in space, in the gender sphere. You don't have to label yourself. You really don't. It's the same thing with sexuality. It's like you don't have to label your sexuality. You can just be. You can just exist. Same thing with gender. You can just exist. But it might get a little tricky when people are referring to you in ways that you don't want to be referred to. So maybe do a little bit more reflection. Next question. Just a few months back, I realized I'm envy gender fluid. And some days I feel more comfortable with certain pronouns. How do you go about telling people that? And how do you deal with trying not to feel like an inconvenience to others? Thank you. This is literally me. I personally have trouble correcting people in person about what pronouns I want them to use for me. I'm better at correcting them on social media because literally all I have to do is like type out a sentence. But in person it's really hard because then like it feels awkward to just be like, oh, I'm sorry, but like, can you just please use they, them? Can you, can you just, can you not call me a girl? I feel like an inconvenience when I do that to people. So this is hard for me to answer. One thing that could maybe help is using a pronoun pin or a pronoun like 
bracelet or something like that. But other than that, you honestly, there's no other way than to just be straight up and honest with that person. And I know it's hard, but maybe doing it at the beginning of the conversation, like towards the introduction, it's gonna be easier than saying it like when you've been talking for like an hour or two hours or when you've known someone for like a couple weeks, a couple months, and then you're like, oh, by the way, all this time you've been misgendering me. Like, I feel like just getting it over with, I know it's, I know it like feels weird, but like, trust me, you're gonna feel so much better. And like that other person is gonna feel so much better that they know that they're not misgendering you now. You need to prioritize you in this situation. You know what I mean? And here's like an example of how you could do that. So let's say two people are talking and they're with you. One of them is introducing you to the other person. Let's say I only use they, them pronouns. This is my friend Kira. She's a singer and an actor. I would just interject. Oh, my pronouns are actually they, them. Thank you so much. Instead of saying sorry, like don't apologize because like it's not your fault. It's really no one's fault. It's it's just a lack of knowledge, a lack of like being informed. Oh, my um, pronouns are actually they, them. Thanks. Casual, casual. That was good. I should practice that in the mirror. Next question. For over 16 years, I consciously liked being a girl and then now for the past like eight months, I've started hating people assuming I'm a girl and she, her doesn't feel right sometimes. And some days I hate using the girl's bathroom. So I started identifying as gender fluid. Is it even possible for my gender to change like that without any childhood signs? I never hear about people with this experience. I love your video so much and I'm so happy for you discovering slash learning more about your identity. Oh, you're cute, thank you. A hundred percent, like you absolutely do not need childhood signs to now identify as non-binary. Duty calls. To enjoy. Nature's calling. <laughs> I personally don't have a ton of childhood signs, but there are certain things I can look back on and be like, ah, that makes sense. But I didn't necessarily even need those to confirm that I am gender fluid now. Some people do have childhood signs, some people don't. I made an Instagram reel where I was like, childhood signs uh, that confirmed I was gender fluid. I wish I could like change the wording of that now, looking back on it, because it didn't confirm that I'm gender fluid. It just signs may point to gender fluidity. Another thing about gender fluidity, fluid is in the title. So that means your gender may change over time. Maybe when you were younger, if you were born female, you felt female up until this point, and now you don't feel like a female anymore. That is valid, that's valid, okay? Next question. I recently came out to my parents with my new name and they keep asking how I identify. Personally, I identify as gender fluid right now, but I don't feel like telling them because I don't want them to make assumptions or put me in a box. So when they ask me how I identify, I've just been telling them I'm just vibing. <laughs> Wait, I love that. That's same. And they're not thrilled. Is it wrong for me to not want to give them a label? No. I don't think so. I think that's just your parents like being confused, maybe wanting to know where you're at. I don't think it comes from a place with ill intentions, but I think it's just them wanting to know more about their child. And also I think they probably wanna know what pronouns to use. They probably also wanna know how to refer to you. So as their daughter, as their son, as their child, I don't think you need to give them a label, whether that's gender fluid, whether that's agender, trans, Non-binary, blah, blah, blah. Don't go in there. I won't. Ah, thank you. Next question. My pronouns are they, them. I think I might be gender fluid, but I don't know if I am since I don't ever feel particularly like an extreme. So never like a man or a woman. I'm always somewhere in the non-binary to agender spectrum, so it's very confusing since all the definitions and experiences that I've read include male and female. The first person that made me relate to it was you. Do you think someone can be gender fluid without ever feeling like either of the two binary genders? A hundred percent. Gender fluid could literally mean you're fluctuating wherever on the gender spectrum. It doesn't mean you have to hit either of the binaries in terms of how you feel day to day. You could be in the middle kind of fluctuating. You could be out here kind of fluctuating. You could be over here kind of fluctuating. You don't have to feel like male or female any of the time. Even though sometimes people may feel like one of the binary genders occasionally and still be gender fluid, you don't have to feel that way in order to be gender fluid. So I hope that helps. This question may have a lot of differing opinions. I know there's a lot of differing opinions on the internet about this, but this is just gonna be my own personal opinion. And 
and no one has to get mad. Someone said, I feel great with identifying as a female, but prefer she, they pronouns. Is that okay? I thought about this for a really long time. It's been marinating in my brain for a while. And I am not the type of person to tell someone you can't do something because if that is how you genuinely feel with no outside pressures on you, then who am I to tell you what you can and can't do? However, if you're a cisgender female, why would you feel the need to use they, them as well as she, her? That would indicate that you might not be a cisgender female. The thing with they, them pronouns is people started using them because it was a gender neutral way of other people to refer to them. So instead of saying she, her, or he, him, it's the gender neutral alternative for people who don't feel comfortable using she, her, or he, him. My question is, why do you want to use they, them? If you feel 100% female and are comfortable in that identity. But I'm also not the one to say like, you can't do something if it feels right to you. What do you guys think in the comments Below. No need to get heated. Let's just have an open discussion about this in the comments below because I genuinely, I am confused about this. And even though I'm confused about it, I'm not gonna tell someone that, that it's wrong. I don't know. Thoughts? Thoughts? Next question. Is there any moment when you finally stopped questioning your gender identity? I haven't. No, honestly, <laughs> no. Since I'm gender fluid, like I might always be questioning it because not the fact that I am gender fluid. The nature of gender fluidity kind of makes me question it all the time because on days where, you know, I might feel gender envy about males and like how they look, I'm like, am I trans? Like, am I a binary trans person? And then on days when I might feel like a female, or a woman, I'm like, wait, am I gender fluid? But I think that's the nature of gender fluidity is like you kind of, you just go like this and you're not like always the same. You don't always feel the exact same. I'm trying to answer as many as possible. This video is gonna be hella long. How to know whether you feel more feminine slash masculine slash other on a particular day. It starts with something happening. So either me getting dressed in the morning or me talking to someone and them referring to me a certain way that I might not like. It's so hard to explain to people who like don't experience it. I get dressed in the morning, I put on a certain thing and I'm like, ah, no, ugh, I, that doesn't feel good. Like today I put on this sweater, but I wasn't wearing a binder under it and I looked in the mirror and I was like, ah, no. And so I put a binder on it and I felt better. And when I was doing my makeup today, I was like, Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have done this because now I don't really feel like this reflects how I want to present today. But I'm just gonna go with it because I already like put in so much work. Next question. Do you have a general outfit formula that is most affirming for you? It depends on the day, honey. It's either like a tighter article of clothing and a looser article of clothing and a mixture of feminine and masculine together. And this isn't every day. Like sometimes I'm flip flopping. I'm gonna answer one more question because this video is gonna be literally an hour long. I don't care what pronouns people call me. Like all the time, I just don't really care. Is there a name for that? That's kind of like pronoun indifference. So like you don't really care which pronouns people use for you. Like all of them work. I think it's called pronoun indifference. Anyway, that was fun. If you've gotten this far, please comment below a yellow heart because that is my favorite color. Thank you for being here. Like I said, if you want to participate in the next video like this, like the next Ask Queera, um, please follow me on Instagram. And I'm also going to be starting a new project that is not on YouTube. And I'm going to be getting a lot of input from you guys. So please follow me on Instagram for updates on that. Here's a hug. Wait, let me get closer. I love you. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.